Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kadash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to share something with you, brothers. Over the past couple of days, I attended a so called Black Leadership Conference and or summit. The organization that I currently work for, they host these events annually, and you'll get the invite to come out. Now, on a surface level, seemingly the organization they're fortifying and training black leaders across the board now in one aspect it's great to see our people in leadership positions but we know that it's still currently under rule under esau's rulership but we know the kingdom to come is going to be complete israelite dominance and rulership it's going to be the most astute posh refined and sophisticated race of people this nation has ever seen the world has ever seen right but on a carnal level these people are clueless they are completely absorbed in corporate america if not that the college or sorority or fraternity they pledge to which is the implementation of the greek customs and we'll get into that momentarily but what i want to focus on right now is how the scriptures tells us time and time again not to love this world, brothers. These are the things of the world. As a matter of fact, we grab these precepts right away. We see this in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And it tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, li listen closely, listen closely. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Meaning if you love that job, that salary, those perks, Right? That career. The love of the Father is not in you, man. Why is that? Verse 16 tells us why. For all the things that are, in, that are in this world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of Yahweh will abide forever. So you, you have to keep this in mind. Everything that's here now is going to be destroyed in America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, through nuclear destruction, man, right? And what the scriptures are going into, but he that doeth the will of Yahweh will abide forever, that's going into those immortal bodies that we're going to get. And then we're going to have forever to enjoy it, right? The level of pride that I've seen on these people in their positions, man, it was, it was, it was as though... You know what? And through the and as I mentioned previously, from the very onset of these of this video, these people are clueless of what's to come of what's coming up. World War Three, a cash transitioning into a cashless society, that mark the implementation of the MOTB, the time of Jacob's trouble. I can guarantee you this. Ninety nine percent of the people in that conference room I was in, they're going to take the mark. They're not going to give up their riches. Like Yahweh Shai told the rich young ruler, right? Forsake all that you have and follow him. For those of us Israelites who are operating in corporate America, there's going to come a time that we're going to have to forsake the job or the career that we have. We're going to have to forsake the salary and follow Yahweh Shai because he's our savior. He's our redeemer, right? We depend on him for all things. Let's go from there. Let's go to... um. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. And it reads, Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this present world is this present form is passing away. You see? This world this script for this world has already been written out, brothers. You know, and if you're not careful when you're in these arena, those spirits, those desires are jump off on you. You know, you might be. You might have a clear understanding of who you are and the condition that you're in. You know, cast down that college demon, man. That that volleying for position demon. Oh, I want this. But let them fight for those fight for those scraps, man. But we are men of the Lord. We're spiritual men. And even that while I was there at this conference around various people, I had to check myself because you don't want that spirit of the world on you, brothers. We want to keep our eye and our mind single. Focus on the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Let's go from there, right? Remember what's mentioned in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. 
Then he said unto them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. I like what the New Living Translation states. Life is not measured by how much you own. I guarantee you this one thing, brothers. There were many individuals in there making six figures, you know, probably on the, on, on, uh, making maybe millions of dollars a year, right? These individuals were doing well for themselves. But what does the scripture say? Let me come down to Proverbs. Proverbs, you know, we want, um, I went ahead and pulled that up. Proverbs chapter, chapter 30. Let me come down to verse 7, right? And it states, Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse them before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I might have too much and disown you. This is why we don't want too much or too little, brothers. We want that sweet spot, right? The scripture goes on to say, Otherwise, I might disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or, I may become poor and steal and also disown the name of my God. You see, this is why we should want that sweet spot, brothers. Now, the Lord may bless some of us more than others, but, excuse me, brothers, pardon me. The Lord may bless some of us more than others, but this should be our desire overall, man. Let's come out of this. I like something that's stated in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. And it reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And to be honest with you, brothers, we shouldn't want it in this kingdom anyway. Look at what they took away from Kanye West. Look at what they did to Kyrie Irving when they got out of line, when they stepped out of bounds, or quote-unquote came out of pocket. They took away their contracts. They took away their millions. They took away their substance. We should want it in the kingdom, Right? We're to, we're to be in an everlasting kingdom where we have an abundance to enjoy and forever to enjoy it. Let's go from there, right? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and it tells us, Do not love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For Yahweh has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Abandon you. Pardon me, brothers. The Lord said he'll never leave us or forsake us. Yes, we're in captivity, but for those of us who have repented and we're seeking the Lord, he's with us, brothers. Sometimes it may not seem like it. Sometimes your faith may, you know, be tested, but that's a part of it, right? Because the Lord is testing and sifting all of us. He's refining all of us as silver is refined. But the Lord has told us he'll never leave us or forsake us, right? And always, brothers, we got to keep 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 in mind. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief. These individuals, these brothers, these sisters, and I mean that in a carnal sense, they don't have a clue, man. These cats that shout out their sororities and their fraternities, volleying for positions, they don't have a clue. And it states, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything that's done on it will be, will, will be laid bare. I saw many cats like this in there, ancestors in there, throwing up the Greek signs, pleasing, so on and so forth, I mean, throwing up their sororities, their fraternity, etc. What they don't understand, the divine nine, let me go to this real quick, the divine nine, right? The divine nine, the National Pan-Hellenic Council is a collaborative umbrella council composed by historically African-American fraternities and sororities, also referred to as Black Greek letter organizations. Now, let me go a little, go back a little bit further, since I saw so many of you at this conference, and I'm not jealous of you. I'm just, but then again, through the spirit, I understand because, like the scripture states, you know, what is does Israel attain? Does Israel? And I'm going to paraphrase here. Does Israel attain what it seek? It? The election have obtained it. So we understand what's going on. And the rest will what? Blind it. The Lord has blinded these, these jakes here. They're lost, man. They're immersed. They're submerged. They're absorbed. They're preoccupied. Right? With corporate America. With their sorority. With that Greek life, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me get this to you, right? So this is where the divine nine comes from. You want to look this up in your own time. The nine muses, Greek mythology. Right? Let me scroll down here and I'll read this real quick and I'll wrap up the lesson. In ancient Greek religion and mythology, the muses are 
the inspirational goddesses, their goddesses, right, of literature, science, and the arts. They are considered the source of the knowledge embodied in the poetry, lyric songs, and myths that are related to orally for uh, related orally for centuries in ancient Greek culture. So Jake, you are worshiping Greek gods, man. The divine nine, all that foolishness. You know, them Q's, them Kappas, them AKAs, right? See, that goes into our people adopting that the, the, the Greek fashion, the Hellenic, the Hellenized Jews. And that's what you are looking at here. And I saw a lot of that over the past couple of days. See? That's why the scriptures state our people are revolted and gone, brothers. Don't get lost in corporate America, brothers. All right? Pray when you're in these situations because you don't want to desire these things. You want to pray that the Lord keeps you so you keep your mind set on what is above. Hopefully this lesson is edifying, brothers. Shalom.